Hello and welcome to ATI 4205. This session will continue addressing inventory management strategies, approaches, and methods used to manage inventory. The session will discuss inventory models for independent demand, including determining the order quantity required to replenish stocked items. The inventory in a warehouse or distribution centers uh, are uh, either based on independent demand or dependent demand. Independent demand means the demand for an item is independent of uh, the demand of uh, or uh, the demand for any other item in uh, inventory. Uh, for example, smartphones demand is independent. The demand for a smartphone does not depend on any other items in inventory. Deb dependent demand means that demand for an item depends on the demand for uh, some other items, um, maybe one or a uh, few items in inventory. For example, uh, bottles and caps. The number of caps required will be based on the number of bottles that will be required to manufacture. Inventory level uh, will be based on uh, demand in addition to other factors such as lead time, holding cost, ordering cost, shortage cost, and setup cost. Lead time, uh, we talked about that before in a previous session, but um, as a reminder, is the time interval uh, between ordering and receiving the order. Holding uh, or carrying cost is the cost uh, to carry an item in inventory for a length of time, usually a year. Whatever you hold, whatever you put on the shelf, it will cost you certain amount of money. Ordering cost is the cost for ordering and receiving inventory. Uh, so once you put the order, you are paying money for that order. So that's a cost. And uh, the shortage cost is a cost when demand exceeds supply. And that at that point, actually, you will be losing a customer uh, because you don't have the item in stock. And that is a cost. And setup cost is a cost to prepare a machine or a process for uh, manufacturing, assembling, or uh, disassembling an order. The holding and the shortage costs are the most concerning costs. You cannot have too much in inventory because that will increase the holding or carrying cost, but at the same time you cannot have shortage because that will cost you uh, through losing your customers and losing sales. The table in this slide shows an example of uh, holding costs uh, categories. So we have the housing costs, we have the material handling costs, we have investment costs, and uh, uh, we have the theft or uh, lost um, or uh, obsolescence cost. Holding costs vary considerably depending on the business location and um, uh, the interest rate um, at that period of time, uh, generally greater than 15%. Uh, some high-tech items have holding costs uh, greater than 50%. And imagine when you have more than 50% of holding costs, you want these items to go as fast as possible. You don't want it to be on the shelf for a long time. In previous session, we identified the level of inventory that will trigger a replenishment order, and we called it a safety stock. Uh, in the next few slides and in the next session, so we are not going to finish uh, during this session, but we are going to extend it to the next session, uh, we will go over different inventory models for independent demand to determine how many items to order based on demand forecast. The three models that will be explained under independent demand are the basic economic order quantity, the production order quantity, and the quantity discount model. In the basic economic order quantity, we assume the following. Demand is known, it's constant, and independent. Lead time is known, and it's constant. Receipt of inventory is uh, instantaneous and complete. Quantity discounts are not possible. The only variable costs are setup and holding. The stockouts can be completely avoided. If you look at the inventory usage over time, you can see that the company will have the maximum amount in stock 
then start consuming until it gets to zero. The company orders again and goes through the whole cycle again and again. Uh, the slanted line represents the usage rate. That is the slope for that line. The average inventory uh, on hand will equal the maximum divided by 2. Now the question will be, are we going to let the inventory go to 0? Or we're going to order an optimal um, quantity when uh, I have something still in stock. First of all, let's answer how, how many or uh, how much do I need to order? What will be the optimal order quantity? And uh, to do that, we need to look at the cost curve. Um, and if we look at the cost curve, we can see that the cost of order will decrease as order quantity increases. With large quantities, companies can negotiate the price and lower the cost while the holding cost increases as order quantity increases. To lower the overall cost, we need to find that point, that optimal order quantity point, which will be the point of the lowest cost for both ordering cost and holding cost. And as you can see, this will be the lowest for both. Since this one will be decreasing, this one will be increasing, then uh, they will meet, they will um, um, actually uh, have this common point between them and this will be the lower point. So the optimal point will be the intersection point between the two curves as shown in this graph. Defining the following, uh, we have Q as the number of pieces uh, per order, uh, number of items that we get, get an order. Uh, Q star is the optimal number of uh, items or pieces uh, per order. Um, D is the annual demand uh, in units uh, for the inventory item. Uh, S is the setup or ordering cost for each order. And H is the holding or carrying cost per uh, unit per year. The annual setup cost will equal the number of orders placed per year multiplied by the setup or order cost per uh, order. Um, number of orders placed per year uh, will equal the number of uh, the annual demand divided by the number of units in each order uh, and substituting that in the equation um, uh, we will have the annual setup cost um, equal to D over Q multiplied by S and this will be our formula for the annual setup cost. While the annual holding cost will equal the average inventory level multiplied by, by the holding cost per unit per year. The average uh, inventory level will equal the order quantity divided by 2 as we uh, said before. That's the average. Uh, based on that, the annual holding cost will equal to Q divided by 2 multiplied by H, the holding or carrying cost per unit per year and that will be our formula for the annual holding cost. The optimal order quantity is found when annual uh, setup um, um, costs or cost equal uh, the annual holding cost. So equating the two formulas we uh, just derived we will find that uh, D over Q multiplied by S is equal to um, uh, Q uh, divided by 2 uh, multiplied by H. Uh, cross multiplying, uh, we will get uh, Q squared equal to the uh, 2DS divided by H and uh, that means that the optimal quantity uh, to order uh, is Q star which will equal the square root of 2DS divided by H and that is the optimal uh, quantity that should be ordered, the number of items that should be ordered to uh, keep uh, the cost as low as possible. So let's take an example. Uh, for example, if we have the annual demand as 1,000 units and the cost of setup per order is $10 and the cost of holding per unit per year is 50 cents. 
uh, then q star will equal to uh, the square root of 2 ds over h and uh, putting the numbers in um, we will get the square root of 40,000 and that is 200 units so the optimal um, number uh, of units that should be ordered is 200 units based on that the expected number of orders will equal to the annual demand which is 1000 divided by the order quantity which is uh, um, in this case 200 um, so if each order will include only 200 items and I need 1000 how many orders do I need to put per year that will be 1000 divided by 200 and that is five orders per year to calculate the expected time between orders we divide the number of working days per uh, year by the number of orders um, remember that there are 52 weeks uh, a year assuming uh, that we have two weeks of vacation then the actual number of working uh, weeks will be 50 uh, weeks um, each week has five business days uh, five times 50 that is a total of 250 working days per year if we divide that by the number of orders five uh, then uh, that will result 50 which is the period so every 50 days I need to uh, uh, put an order uh, for 200 items every 50 days I'll put an order for uh, 200 units or 200 items to calculate the total cost we add the setup cost uh, to the holding cost which means that the total cost will equal to D uh, divided by Q multiplied by S uh, uh, plus uh, Q divided by 2 uh, multiplied by H substituting the values that we have uh, or that we had before um, the total cost will equal to um, uh, 5 times 10 plus 100 times 50 cents which will equal to 50 plus 50 and that's hundred dollar the um, economic uh, order uh, quantity model is robust uh, it works even if all parameters and assumptions are not met the total cost curve is relatively flat in the area of the uh, uh, economic order model or uh, quantity model to uh, demonstrate the robustness of the model uh, let's assume that the management did, uh, under uh, estimated the demand or um, maybe a disaster happened such as a pandemic or a hurricane that caused a sudden increase in the demand and um, we need to see uh, how would uh, our calculation look like after that so instead of 1000 units the demand is 1500 units so the total cost will equal uh, to 125 if we recalculated everything it will be 125 instead of 100 that's an increase in the annual cost by 25 percent but the quantity of 200 was based on the uh, old demand uh, updating the order quantity using the new demand uh, of 1500 uh, it will equal to 244.9 244.9 so the total annual cost will equal to uh, if we recalculate using the uh, new uh, demand uh, new annual demand and the new number of units that should be ordered uh, will be 122.48 um, so with 200 if we order 200 it's 125 if we order um, 244 which is 44 units more it's 122.48 which is only uh, 2% less than the total cost of 125 when the order was 200 and that's you know the um, the slight change which is just the 2% makes it robust so even if we have like uh, um, uh, inaccuracy of the demand or underestimated demand still uh, the equation uh, or the model worked with us as previously stated the economic order quantity model answer the question of how much or how many items I need to order 
it provides the optimal quantity of an order based on the lowest cost for the holding and the setup while as explained in previous lectures the reorder point will monitor um, inventory level and tell us uh, when to order based on what we have in stock so that's the reorder point so the reorder point is uh, okay how many do I have in stock to reorder while the model will give me how many to order what will be the quantity to order from um, the supplier so the reorder point is the point that uh, when I look at the items that I have in stock then I will uh, place an order for uh, something from outside the reorder point will equal to demand per day multiplied by lead time for a new order in days or D times L demand per day can be calculated by dividing the annual demand by number of working days per year this uh, graph shows the usage rate that is a uh, number of units per day uh, or daily demand do you remember when we said this is the slope this is the usage uh, per day um, also it shows the reorder point and the lead time uh, in days uh, what we said we said that we are not going to wait or the company or the firm will not going to wait until inventory goes to zero to order because if you wait until it goes to zero then you are losing some of the uh, clients or some of the customers so you don't want that to happen you want to have a reorder point and that's when once I reach to this point then I will put an order place an order for my quantity of Q star that I just found so we need to find the reorder point and then we need to find how many do I need to reorder those are the two points that are um, um, of interest and I need to calculate both uh, an example of reordering point let's assume that we have an annual demand of um, for iPads of 8,000 units per day and we have 250 working days per year so the lead time for an order is three working days as given in the um, uh, question or in the example calculate the reordering point daily demand will equal the annual demand divided by the number of working days in a year which will equal to 8,000 divided by 250 and that will result 32 units per day based on that the reordering point will equal daily demand multiplied by lead time that is 32 multiplied by 3 which will result 96 units so once I have 96 units in stock I need to reorder to replenish my inventory and I need to put the order for whatever the amount is which is the Q star um, another model that can be used to calculate the order quantity is the production order quantity model this model is used when inventory builds uh, up over a period of time after an order is placed it can be uh, used uh, when units are produced and sold simultaneously the graph in this slide shows the trend of parts of inventory uh, cycle during uh, which production and usage is taking place as shown the demand parts of cycle with no uh, production um, you can see the line for uh, the part of inventory cycle during which production and usage is taking place and you can see the demand of part with no production in the production order quantity model the following terms can be identified again we have Q as the number of pieces or items per, per order H is the holding cost per unit per year um, T is the length of the production run in day or in days um, P 
P is the uh, daily production rate and D is the daily demand per usage rate. The annual inventory holding cost will equal to average inventory level multiplied by the holding cost per unit per year. And uh, the annual um, inventory level, we know that it's maximum inventory level divided by two, that's the average. Um, maximum inventory level will equal to total produced during the production run minus total used during the production run, uh, which will equal to PT minus DT. However, Q is equal to total produced, which will equal to uh, PT. Thus, T is equal to Q divided by P. Substituting the value of T in the maximum inventory level formula, then um, um, with maximum inventory level uh, that will equal to P, T minus DT will equal to PQ over P minus DQ over P, which will equal to Q multiplied by 1 minus D uh, over uh, P. Holding cost will equal to maximum uh, inventory level uh, divided by 2 multiplied by H and that is Q divided by 2 uh, multiplied by the um, 1 minus D over P multiplied by H or we can say that holding cost is equal to half HQ multiplied by 1 minus D over P. The setup cost will equal to D divided by Q multiplied by S. Holding cost um, is equal to half uh, HQ multiplied by 1 minus D over P. Equating those two formulas will result that Q squared will equal to uh, 2DS divided by H multiplied by 1 minus uh, D over P uh, and uh, to find the uh, order quantity for the production uh, from that formula uh, it will equal to the square root of 2ds divided by h multiplied by 1 minus d over p and that's for the production order quantity model so that's another model that we can use to calculate the quantity let's take an example uh, for example if we have d as 1000 units the s is $10 the H is 50 cents per unit per year, the P is equal to 8 units per day, and D uh, is the rate for uh, daily demand or daily usage is 4 units per day. Uh, then Q star will equal to the square root of 2DS divided by H multiplied by 1 minus D over P, uh, or the square root of 80,000 if you substitute all these values down here. Uh, it will be the square root of 80,000, which is 282.8 or uh, 283 units, 283 units, 283 units. The daily demand will equal the annual demand divided by the number of working days. Uh, that is 1,000 divided by 250, which is, uh, in this case, four orders. So... Um, uh, the um, or uh, I mean for units the daily demand is for units uh, when annual data are used the equation uh, which will uh, change for daily uh, to uh, from daily to annual is the um, Q star uh, we can just take the uh, daily and put annual demand rate and annual production rate to uh, recalculate for annual um, quantity or for the annual uh, order quantity so that will be all for the session still we, we are not finished with the inventory control so we uh, are going to continue um, next week um, um, on inventory control um, so next session we uh, will address more uh, inventory models and inventory management uh, methods uh, but for now that will be all for this session um, thank you and have a great day.